Hummingbirds aren't the only birds that shine. Peacocks will blow you back with their bright blues and greens. Closer to home, mallards. Starlings and grackles are iridescent. In fact, a grackle looks like a feathered oil slick, but its gleam is so dark that it's just a sparkler to the hummingbird's full-on 4th of July fireworks. The other shiny birds have only a little of what hummingbirds possess in abundance. The secret to that shimmering blaze of glory is the prisms in hummingbird feathers. Now you probably know that prisms are transparent objects, like water or glass, that turn any light flooding through them into the colors of the rainbow. Now the shape and thickness of every prism dictates what colors are going to come out the other side. Okay, so what I said was that hummingbirds have prisms in their plumage, which sounds laughable, actually. I mean, how does that work? Does a male hummer have teensy little disco balls tucked under the plumage on his throat? Obviously not. What he has is thin, flat air bubbles at the surface of the iridescent feathers. The bubbles are located on the small, delicate parts of the feather called barbules. Turns out that air bubbles can be prisms, too. Well, you know that much from watching the sun form colors on soap bubbles you blow from a wand. The Hummer has air bubbles shaped like lozenges stacked row upon row like pancakes, as many as 15 layers, and they produce the same shine as soap bubbles do. They don't pop like soap bubbles, though, because they're packed into protective structures. The air bubbles are almost inconceivably tiny. A hundred million of them can fit onto a single feather. If you're looking at, say, the throat, what's called the gorget, of a ruby-throated hummingbird in full sunlight, what you're seeing, multiplied tens of millions of times over, is a ray of light hitting an air bubble in a gorget barbule. Because of the bubble structure, it absorbs all the colors except red. The red emerges from the underside, bounces off the back of the feather, and reflects red light into your eyes. Now, even though the multiple layers of bubbles all produce red, they're not identical. They're all slightly different from each other, so that they intensify and magnify the main color with their complex shading. When you multiply a ray of light hitting an air bubble by tens of millions, it's like pulling a sequined rabbit out of a hat. It's magical. What we see when we look at a shimmering hummingbird gorget in sunlight is ever so intricate shading with the shine of soap bubbles. With this difference. Soap bubbles are wobbly, unpredictable prisms. Hummingbird prisms are precise. When the sun hits the head of a male ruby topaz hummingbird, count on it. That bird's gorget and crest are going to look, what do you know, just the way every ruby topaz gorget and crest is supposed to look. The exact thickness and shape of every layer is programmed into the bird's DNA. You might wonder what even prompted the evolution of those air bubbles. One possible explanation is that they developed to make the Hummer lighter, thus improving its flight. So the bubbles might possibly contribute to the way every Hummer can hiccup to a stop then veer and swerve like a ping-pong ball with a mind of its own. But whatever the original reason the bubbles developed, they've turned hummingbirds into jeweled pixies, tiny peacocks with an attitude. And yet, despite the precise programming that makes each individual bird look like the others of its species, you could say that the electric colors are not even there, that they're an illusion because in the end, they're only as real as the shifting light on air bubbles. No more real than a rainbow. 